Welcome world, welcome world, welcome world. You're tuned in to Illinois Radio Chicago's most valuable radio show. I'm your boy Biko alongside special guest co-host DJ First Class. And as always, we bring you all the illest guests from around the city and globe. And today, we got the homie Cassius Tate in the building. <laughs> 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 banger, banger, you know what banger. Say, yo, what's banger. cracking, y'all? How y'all feeling? You know what I'm saying? On this good ass time. Hey, you know what's crazy as hell? Y'all can't see out the window, but, you know, so I just dropped this project called Alone in Blue Hour. It's crazy that my uh, interview we doing right now is oh, during Blue, Blue Hour. Hour. And then oh, I got it. on the shit. You feel yeah, me? So, and this hey, nigga's shirt matched the, the fucking style. Hey, you know what I'm saying? Don't so it's super live. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, super happy and blessed to be here with y'all. Yeah, so. I'm happy you're here, my brother. Um, I've been a fan of your music for quite some time. Thank you so much. And I'm not going to lie to you. Yeah. I tend to mess up your name sometimes. Nah, it's, it's cool. You know what I'm saying? It's like, I, low key, I need to take what Black did. Like, he got like the different versions. It's pronounced Black. It's pronounced Black. I need to do like, it's not pronounced Cassius, Cassis, or however they be saying like, man, it's Cassius. You know, I, but I got to spell it out phonetically. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That might be a, a brand of merch or some shit I could wear. I don't <laughs> yeah, know. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? You can turn, turn that into some marketing shit yeah. and itself and yeah. take off with that. You, you know, know what I'm saying? saying? That yeah. shit's wearable. You know, shit's funny. I think it's also uh, cool, too, with people sometimes seeing me feeling like I'm always, like, super serious. But I be just chilling. You know what I'm saying? I'm chill. Yeah. I'm observing. I just be peeping, seeing. And I be liking the shit that's going on. I'm just not necessarily, like... Always very like reactionary, you know what I'm saying? So I think to add some, but I am goofy and silly in certain ways. So that to show that comic relief in me, I feel like that should be important. You yeah, know yeah. What I'm saying? Man, I didn't know. So I mean, I haven't dealt with the com comedic side. Man, of, uh, man, of it you. it just kind of just be like in the moment I see some shit and I just get the going on it. But it just be like with people I'm with, like damn, like people seeing this shit. Or I could definitely say like. When I was younger, you know what I'm saying, me and my niggas from the block, we was ignorant as fuck. We used to just do just the most ignorant shit. Like, I, I'm talking about, like, tourists that come from out of town, downtown, and ask, like, where the John Hancock building is, some shit. I'm pointing south as fuck. Like, <laughs> hey, that bitch is definitely <laughs> over there. They're like, all right, then. You know sending what I'm saying? That, hey, sending that ass clean. No, man, man. Just, but just because, like, bro. you know, it's, like, it's just like, man, obviously I don't do shit like that no more. That shit's like, you know, that's some goofy shit. But, yeah. I mean, I'm like 12, 11, 10, you know, like, you know, you you young as hell going downtown with twenty dollars. You can't do much. You might as well send motherfuckers off. So. Facts. Yeah. Hey, yeah, I mean, you speaking that on that though, like you say, you was eleven, twelve around the time. That yeah, just shows yeah. you how how you know parents was back in the day yeah. to allow their kids to be able to, go to out. adventure on their own. Because I remember taking a bus at a young age. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, you don't see. Well, you still see it, yeah. but not as often. Yeah, but. yeah. It's definitely like I always been like an active person. Like especially when it comes to being outside. Anybody who ever like hang with me, grew around me, like we was always outside. And I think like a lot of my music reflects like. Me and like being outside with like you know what I'm saying just the homies because a lot of shit that I seen have I, I just talk about in my music and obviously as I like mature as a person and as a man I always want to show like the different phases of me as a man as I grew so it's like okay like I'm you know I'm missing a block and shit I'm in school and shit and then you know I run into girls and shit and I'm liking girls but then I find out like uh sometimes motherfuckers be on weird shit I mean I ain't just discover girls in college like mm -hmm. but you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. like artistry wise that's just what I was inspired by always telling about the shit that was like in the front of the house you know what I'm saying like in the four or six block radius that's just all the shit that I, you know, used to rap about. So, well, yeah. now you spoke on a different. So, what's some things you see differently about yourself now compared to, let me just say back then? I would say, like, I'm very more like self aware in things that I need to be like a better person when I have days that are like off or times that are off. Like, I'm really big on like trusting my gut. So, it's like, let's say I want to go somewhere, but like I get a weird feeling. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. back then, I'll probably just ignore it. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? But like, I'm like far more in tune. They'd be like, okay, I know not to go. And then I don't know why I shouldn't go, but maybe, you know, I trust the feeling. And then that you look on the internet and you see something happen on the expressway. And it's like, oh, I had, yeah, that's just weird. You know what I'm saying? Like, I had to go that way. You feel yeah, me? For so. real, for real. You know, oh, so having that wisdom for sure, like growing up uh, as you grow and just, I don't know, you know, I feel like wisdom is more of an experience thing. Knowledge is more so like, you know, you could feed yourself things and listen to things. Wisdom mm -hmm. too, but at the same time, I don't know, I feel like 
Wisdom is more so something from you that you can give to mm-hmm. to give people knowledge. You yep. know what I'm saying? And that, so. and that shit, like wisdom, definitely just come with with age. So the older we get, the wiser we should get. Man, you always. Know you know what I'm saying? Simple as that. Now, yeah, yeah. now, uh, you know, you've been on the Chicago music scene for quite some time. Yeah, you know. What I'm How saying? many years now, man? So, uh, probably, probably like six or seven. You know, but the only thing I will say that why it doesn't feel like that long to me because as as far as like my peers as far as artists go like i left and went to college so i went to college and i'm trying to like do this chicago shit while i'm in another state and then i come home during like breaks and shit and i see these niggas just thriving at home Mm -hmm. so i'm like sitting here trying to like find my footing and to show niggas like yo like i'm here too i don't be here but I am here. So I graduated like 2019. Uh, what college? So I went to Central Michigan University. Um, it's like in the middle of Michigan. It's like two hours from Detroit. And that's why I record all of my music out there. Because I, first of all, I only went wait. to college because they had a studio in the school. <laughs> wait, you said this that's where, this, where you currently record all your music? Yes, yes. Yeah, so. What the f- so I'm gonna so I'm tell I'm gonna tell why. So That's look, look, look. Dedication, you know, the right? So there to travel your way to, to Detroit. <laughs> so look, the reason why I record in Detroit is because originally, you know, what I'm saying when I was a short and I started recording music, you know, what I'm saying like niggas that was older than me that was showing us how to rap and teaching me how to write songs. I was like in a rap group when I was younger. They had a studio in K Town. You know, what I'm saying shout out Hustle Squad because them niggas was them niggas, still is. And so after a while, you know, the neighborhood was just too dangerous for us to go, you know, record in. So when I got to like a senior in high school, my mom, she was kind of like, she wanted me to stay closer to the crib because of like certain crib things. But I asked them like, yo, if I could find a college that has a studio where I don't have to pay studio time too, because there are schools that make you still pay, can I go away to school? And so she like, yeah. So, you know, I applied to 28 schools, got denied by all of them. The reason why I got denied because my junior, I didn't want to go to college. So I always had good grades and I kind of rebuilt. So when I went to school, they was like, okay, you could get, you got, you qualify for a scholarship, but if you graduate with this GPA, which was like a 3.6, then you can uh, get 10 bands, you know what I'm saying, every year off. So I was like, fuck it, I just got a 4.1 just to make sure I'm going. You was a smart one. So I was like, fuck it, it's just, just, you can't, don't think to give it to nobody else because they only giving 10, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, this is my ticket to record, you feel me? So I just wasn't playing. Went to record. And I recorded my first project there, and I met my best friend slash engineer slash producer, and, you know, he's from, like, outside of Detroit. He lives there now, so I just, shit, that's where I go to record. So over the course of years, I'm either taking trains or he had an internship here in Chicago, so in his times he'll go back home, i go there. And I was just like, it was after college, for real, and sometimes the summers. I, like, when I was out of college, bro, I would, like, out of, like, a 12-month radius, I've spent half of the year. I would probably do, like, every two to three weeks in Chicago, do another two, three weeks in, in Detroit. It'd be right record, right record. Or sometimes I would just, like, go to Detroit for three months. by coastal. Literally. Yeah, you know literally, what I'm saying? Literally. Yeah, you, and, if you was flying, my brother, the flight points you and Malik, you <laughs> Look, I definitely wasn't flying. I was definitely taking the train every time. And the train rides would be crazy because it's like you can't ever predict how long a train to be. So you find yourself... Like, that's speaking of, like, things that I, I grew to learn as I get older. Like, I'm not patient, but I am. I'm patient for, like, the things I want. Right. So it's like you you book this ticket and they tell you four hours and then some shit happen. And it's easy. Like, they like Amtrak don't own the track. So another train could come on there and you got to wait if they get there first. You might get there, like, it might take five, six hours to get there. You know what I'm saying? And, and shit. You got to just wait on it. I'd have been on the plane. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Hey, look, look, look. Shit, because a nigga is spoiled now, but I need yeah. to fly every game. But you know, right, coming right. out of college, that hey. shit was like a but different type, of, yeah, type yeah, yeah. of pocket. Right, so right, like, right, right. So it's like, okay, yeah. if the plane costs, and I'm not booking ahead of time. So like, I, to fly to Detroit is not a lot. It's like uh, like 40 to go or some shit like that. But like, if I see like a ticket to Detroit on a train, it's 40 round trip. And like I'm saying, to book advance for a flight in Detroit. If I, and now if I book one tomorrow, which I was doing with the trains, that shit gonna probably be like two hundred dollars yeah, or some yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. Like nigga, just get on yeah. the train. Like, like you, know you said, what you was on the college budget. I, I know you. how that goes. Like, so yeah, so that's yeah, ain't no money. Yeah. So shout out to all the college students out there because that shit yeah. gets real. Yeah. It does. Yeah. It does. Real, and and I, know? I definitely know what that shit's like. And as far as like being a Chicago artist and being on the scene for a minute with me graduating. 
um, and still going back and forth between that, it doesn't feel like I've been on the scene as long as I I, I wish. I was saying I wish I wish I felt like I was on there, but I feel like I got to try harder to be like, look, nigga, I'm here. You know what I'm saying? And then also keeping those ties there. So I kind of that's that's the beauty of it. Like I get support from two different places. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that's pretty know, dope. Yeah. I mean, but still, like to just know that you travel. To Detroit to record, yeah, to record. your music, you know dedication. Yeah, I dedication, record in the studio called uh, Assemble Sound. Shout out Assemble, man. They they go crazy. Um, and man, they house like a really really good, a lot of really good artists. You know, I always feel like they kind of like, you know, like X Men got the school for the gifted. You know what yeah. I'm saying? That's kind of like how I feel about Assemble. You know what I'm saying? And I was never like a resident artist, but they, you know, offer of just relation to them fucking with my music and fucking with me as a person. It's like, man, like. Yo, you ever need the space? It's whatever. So you know, I like I I pay for train tickets, but I don't pay for studio time. That's love. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So for me to go out there for like three months, yeah, and record, you know so how much music I can make. That's and that's what I was gonna get into your process because yeah. with you actually taking a trip here and there, uh, I I want to know how. So <laughs> do so you the put pro- things together. The production that I received from. Like, you know, Tebow, which is, you know, say my engineer and producer. And also I work with Jay Cribs. He's another producer out there. It's like next level for me. And I always try to do things that's different and especially for my surroundings. But I feel like because of how the surroundings in Chicago is like I feel I, when I go to Detroit, I feel like life is great because I'm doing something I love. When I get back to Chicago, it's the real world. Like, yep. it's like this shit is actually hard as yeah. fuck. So all of my music I write. In Chicago You know what I'm saying Cause it's like I write from a perspective Of like Sometimes I write from a place of Damn Like I have to do this shit This shit ain't sweet Every day You know what I'm saying Like you're not just Doing what you love Out of leisure So they kinda get that drive And that passion Of that pen That's why like I gotta say the craziest shit When I rap Because it's like A nigga scrolling on Instagram They'll post your shit On the story Or whatever the fuck And you say You get like a minute To upload And shit A nigga wanna listen For seven seconds So Yo for Yo One of them bars They catch Every line gotta be Something crazy You know what I'm saying bro Because if I'm doing all this shit Going back and forth To just half ass it Then what, what's, what's the, the point What the what, fuck is the, the point I could shit. obviously Easily record in Chicago And I have yeah. Like saying I don't I do record sometimes here But like I mean shit If I spend like You know Two or three months out there Like bro I feel that So you know shit saying? To to get into your Your new project Alone in Blue Owl Shit just talk about uh, Like the meaning of the so album, the, the album's title. So alone. So Blue Hour, I would first say, is basically the is the twenty five to thirty minutes before sunrise or after sunset. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? So because of that, um, the project is twenty five minutes, so that way you can listen to it during the span of Blue Hour. Blue Hour is also a time frame when people shoot. Um, like like photography, like during a certain time to catch like the blues in the sky and things like that. And so on on the project, my outro song is Portrait for a Hundred, and Portrait for a Hundred is a film. Um, like a, a like you know how you buy film rolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's basically like the name of it, Portrait for a Hundred. You know, so you could buy like Portrait for a Hundred, Two Hundred, Eight Hundred. You know, and it, all the, all the hundreds is just. ISO settings for you to shoot in You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying Based on like the amount of light That the film could take And basically how I came with Alone in Blue Hour Was during COVID I was seeing so much Blue Hour photography Because the shit was like Well the, I guess going into this year Because I was just seeing a lot of people Shooting during the winter And I really love photography Out in London and shit like that and they go crazy with shit like that. Hey, for you know real, though, boy. Like, I be seeing like uh, crazy. Like, uh, random pictures and shit from from photographers and, mm-hmm. and all that in different parts. Well, in specifically like London, London. and, shit and like, like that. And it's always like it's kind of like to me, it's like the some of the same. I'm not gonna say like layout or nothing like that, but yeah. it's all similar. And it has shit, a feel to dope. it. Yeah, yeah. You know, like, you you know could, that it's some shit that's you, not up in the state. You know it, bro. Yeah, and you, you know can feel it. Like, and and yeah. certain. Places based on they, the geometry of where they from, like the blue hour is different. So like I can never get a good blue hour by the lake, you know what I'm saying, unless I wake up at 5 a.m. because mm-hmm. the sun rises in the east. Mm-hmm. So it's like as it's rising, I got to get it looking blue this way. So but basically like the feeling of like blue was just feeling like in the, in the crib during blue hour. It was just like I was feeling very like 
treat it in a cold hearted way and I relate blue to that you know and I feel like I was seeing so much blue photography that I came with that idea because I felt like during the daytime you don't think about a lot of shit but during the nighttime that's when your thoughts start to hit Facts. and I feel like the, when the shit start looking like this that's, that's when, when I'm created. reminded of like fuck mm-hmm. so that's kind of that how you and can't. I was and that's when I you know I could be around a lot of people but as it gets darker I'd be feeling like I'm in my loneliest moments so that's how Alone in Blue Hour came to be mm-hmm. you know Damn. what I'm saying and so you know what we got Man, yeah, that, that, that we, shit deep right that's there. Very look, that, bro. Look. Make sure to check out the Illness playlist in which we provide you with the latest tracks we play live on our show. Head over to Spotify and search Illinois Radio to follow our playlist as well as follow our podcast. Now let's get back to the show. Yo, it's DJ First Class. You tune in to Illinois Radio. We sitting here chopping it up with the homie Cassius Tate you in this motherfucker. Mm-hmm. What's cracking, y'all? You know, hey, I'm just glad to be up here because. I've been wanting to come up here and in a, do an interview for a minute because I know, like, last year I did an ill style, which I'm super gra- grateful that you hit me up about, you know what I'm saying, to do it and just see, like, how many opportunities and where that took off for me. So, Damn. you know, I, I just, you know, I always appreciate y'all, you know what I'm saying, Look, a lot. Like, for speak real. on it because, I Listen. you know, we, I mean, at the end of the day, we behind the mics and things yeah, of that nature. Yeah, but yeah. I actually want to know, like, when, you know, you, you get an opportunity like that and you say, Opportunities came your way What's some of those Opportunities that You know at least help Put you on onto another level From doing that I feel like The biggest thing Is probably Whenever you get Whenever you do something That a lot of people Like like or share And stuff like that You get more followers You know what I'm saying The biggest opportunity You could always get Is a crazy a fan base You know yep. what I'm saying Like no matter what That's always a crazy opportunity And then I feel like Sometimes when you have People who Having people who are verified follow you, you know what I'm saying, it does do a lot for you because it's like if they rocking with it, people sometimes trust what they like, you know what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. So I remember during that time it was just like, okay, well, it was just a bunch of, I know it's COVID, but at the same time, like when this is done, we're just going to start hitting you up for shows and this and this and that and the third. And it's like, oh, or even if it's just like you don't even know that I, I that I model as well. So it's like hmm. you see that and you go to my page and then I just got a bunch of shoots after that. You know what I'm saying? So it's just like any anything could bring anybody to like look at you and what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? It doesn't have to be. You you know what I'm saying if you most high talented doesn't you don't know which one is gonna bring you know send attention to you, you so mm-hmm. see yeah. cause that's why I brought it up because it's like we post you know of course we'll create the content yeah we'll post it I've always believed in you as a man student. thank you, you so know, much I'm, yeah. I'm like I, I, we gotta bring yeah, cash thank you. up it's only and right. get it in thank you. thank you and you came through and you got it in yeah. so and me and just us in general our hopes is okay when we put this out mm-hmm. we hope people gravitate to it yeah. um and 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 it do what it need to do and hearing you know hearing from you that it. It helped you. It's always a blessing and yeah. modeling. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah. I, man, I, that kind of comes about just like, I don't want to say naturally, but I think it was just something I just, I feel like how it started was me feeling like it's important for me to be on my album covers. So how I got into modeling was shooting pictures for covers that I thought that would be covers. And then when I looked at it, I was like, this looked too modely. And then somebody's like, well, this shit would be good to add into a portfolio. And I'm like, what's a fucking portfolio? I don't know what that is. You know what I'm saying? Got to learn and the, mm-hmm. Exactly. So so then the, the lady who uh, who first started shooting me in that way, it was kind of like, well, um, I I have to do a bunch of projects for this um, for this magazine, whatever the case may be. Can I just, can you could just be my subject. So I basically practiced through her. You know what I'm saying? You know what? I'm, I don't, I'm, I never cut off, but nah. I, I got to ask. You know, you said you have a a, a, a woman photographer. Yeah. Uh, I, I wish she was here because I, w- I want to say, well, I'm going to ask you, but mm-hmm. do you feel like with her being in position of taking photos of you, she knows the right angles, you know, with her being a woman and taking yeah. photos of a man and it has a different pop to it? I think the fact that she was a white woman probably added because I think as as her being a white woman in photography she didn't want to do anything to offend a black man or Mm. somebody black so her biggest thing was a lot of times when white people shoot black people or not like you know saying the past or like movies and things like that the lighting be off like you're not lighting this person like they not dark skin you know what i'm saying so i would i feel like through camera she helped me probably be more confident in being 
dark skin on camera because I have more trust in that a skilled photographer would know what to do, how to light me. Because I would get a lot of pictures back and be like, I don't like that shit. And I wouldn't think, and I would figure out, like, it's dem- it's definitely not me. It's just it's just how that they did things, you know what I'm saying? And how light would contort my face. And then at that time, I had just started growing a beard. So that was new for me, you know what I'm saying, to figure that out. And my brother, he also does um, photography. And he, you know, shoots a lot of my videos. So we get up and we practice all the time, you know what I'm saying? We, like... A lot of the same shit Like you know So it's like We we will be in the house And not know that we On the same wave Like as far as Blue Hour Like when I was saying I wanted to start shooting Blue Hour photography I'm upstairs And he in the basement Studying Blue Hour photography You know what I'm saying it, It's like Damn I really like this shit Let's just do some shit uh, We start checking Taking Blue Hour photography I'm like I was just about to run downstairs And tell you that shit You know what I'm saying So I think um, I don't know Like I think As far as like what Shorty did as far as, like, helping me with things, I think the biggest thing was just to help me feel confident in being dark-skinned on camera. You mm. know what I'm saying? Yep. That's a big thing. Yeah, it is. You Huge. know what I'm saying? Especially for her to be a white woman and her feeling like, I just want to do somebody black justice. You know what I'm saying? And she she shot a lot of uh, pictures that, that had to do with, like, um, social injustices and, and things like that. So I kind of was a practice for her to do something that was kind of, like, off of what she does. Usually all her photography is, like, with the message. So, yeah. And that, and that's really dope that you uh sure that that you link with her in that, yeah. you know in, in that manner because I've seen bro personally I've come across and these are like celebrity photos and shit mm-hmm. those pictures did not not look good at all you like those saying? photographers you could just tell they did not give a fuck yeah yeah I don't about I don't, like it was like no no type of scope no type of vision none of that shit bro and it's like they so focused on who they shooting yeah. But they don't. They think about like the opportunity of the subject that they forget the art through the lens. Right, you know what I'm saying exactly. that's more important because you fuck around, shoot somebody famous or not. If the picture don't look good, they don't use it. You know what I'm saying. I don't know if we can like do this, put pictures up on the screen as the interview is going. But I would love to like show at least like a picture or two that she did. You know what I'm saying taking me. They on my Instagram and shit that I can see. I don't know if y'all do that shit, but uh, you know I'm gonna put it up because yeah, yeah, I'm on your yeah. Instagram yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, like, yeah. did she take all a majority? Nah. Of these so photos? so if you scroll all the way down, it's a picture of me and I got like a pink shirt on and I'm holding like uh, flowers. You know what I'm saying. So she she took those. And she took like some black and white pictures during that time frame too. But like I'm a I'm a I'm a send them to you. So like when we put this shit up, motherfuckers be like yeah, you know what I'm saying? She did her shit for real. But um, yeah though, like I appreciate her a lot. Shout out, you know what I'm saying? Uh, her for doing that for me. What's her name? Uh, Josie. Josie. Yeah. Shout yeah. out to Josie. Real yeah, yeah, yeah. Josie, because yeah. photography. I'm in camera work in general. Yeah, exactly. Shout out to the man behind the camera, Raw Roller. Raw exactly. Raw. It, it's not an easy task at all. So big shout out to Josie as yeah, well. Yeah, man, especially doing the role she's she, she's played as as you just uh, man you just explained. You so. know what I'm saying? And I think it's just I don't know. And I think being a rapper, you got to be confident on camera, not even just like in pictures, like in video. Because I go a lot, of, I go to a lot of video shoots, not even just video shoots. Because I feel, well, let's just say video shoots. Video shoots is just performing on camera. I yeah. feel like if you can't perform on stage, you can't perform on camera. If you don't know how to be confident on camera, that shit sometimes like will reflect in your performance yep. on and off camera. You know what I'm saying? So I've been fortunate to not ever. Well, I have had stage fright. I get stage fright when it's not a lot of people in the crowd. You know what I'm saying? Is it because it's not a lot of people in the crowd? Yeah, that shit <laughs> blow me. You know what I'm saying? Like when it's like other people, like it's like oh, like That's I'm good. You know what I'm saying? Head. Like it's good. Like I'm super comfortable. Like I don't get excited for, for, for performances. I feel like I've got excited for a couple of performances and I lost control. I wasn't really like in control of what was going on. Mm. I didn't get really my best show, but I'm always super laxed and just super I'm super grateful for the opportunity to just like. You know, I, every time I do my show prayer, I, I thank God for, you know, giving me the talent to be able to, to create and then create again and then mm-hmm. to be on the stage before to know how to do what I'm doing. And then hopefully whatever I'm doing now will just bring more opportunities. But if not, I'm happy for this moment. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So, And I, we, I've we recently seen you perform, too, at the Promontory earlier Oh, thank you. Year. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you yeah, held yeah. it down. Thank you. you know? I couldn't even slide to that shit. Yeah. I was mad as hell. And you yeah, normally yeah. slide to everything. Nah, yeah, nah that's yeah. spicy. I do be seeing, bro. That's spicy. <laughs> yeah. Everywhere. Well, yeah. check his IG story right now. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I, I think it's also crazy too. Like when I had that show, like, um, damn, that's crazy because I had the that was the first time I performed Wave Runner, and the first time Wave Runner was on radio was here. You know what I'm saying? So damn. I appreciate y'all for that because when he when Go Hey sent me that song, my intention was to make 
something that can be played on the radio, but not something that's like gimmicky radio, you know? Mm -hmm. But I didn't know like it was going to be the intro to my project because, well, I didn't set out to make an EP when I had all those songs, you know what I'm saying? It was kind of just like, uh, you know, in the pandemic, you writing, you got a collection of songs. You also going through emotions of just like, it could be like, um, I don't know, like you could be anxious, you could be, you know, dealing with like, uh, heartbreak and shit like that And th- these are all things That was going through my mind When I made You know what I'm saying Alone in Blue Hour And I think I ended up piecing the project together Based on like The flow of like A man's emotions When he goes through something That's like Upsetting to him You know what I'm saying Like in the heart You feel me So it's just like Wave Run I also wanted to Make it be something That was aggressive Because you know like If you a man And you deal with heartbreak Your first instinct Is to be mad You yep. know what I'm saying Before mm-hmm. you settle Into your emotions You know what I'm saying The next song I got on there Is called Trouble And it's basically saying Like I might say Some shit that might Get me in trouble I'm basically just like Saying shit about women That piss me off You feel me The next song Is called Scoop It's like well, fuck it. I can't just send my thoughts. I got to go slide on somebody to get rid of this shit. Oh, bro. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And as the project goes, I'm unfolding more into my emotion and come into the realization like, damn, like, this shit really do fucking bother me. You know what I'm saying? So when you get to the last song, it's like I'm finally back into, like, in, in liking and in love with someone. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. It's just to have that completion. And I don't, you know, obviously I'm saying all of these things about the project, all these nuances and deep things, but I don't do this shit just because I want people to catch it. It's just I care about it, but regardless of the fact, you can digest it without knowing all of this shit. And, you know what I'm yeah. saying? And another thing about you, you don't just release, like, projects. Like, you, you're not yeah. a person that's going to saturate people nah. with projects or music. Exactly. And, like, with you... Breaking down alone in the blue hour yeah. that lets you know you sit and you really think about what you're going to release. Yeah, yeah. I think I think also too like with me coming with the idea to make it a project, kind of was like I was sitting in the crib. I had these songs that I really liked. There was other ones that didn't make the project, but uh, somebody who has been directing my last three videos at this point, you know, what I'm saying Shanti as hell. And I was sitting here, I was playing her my songs, you know what I'm saying? And she was like, man, it would be cool if uh, you made a mini movie, you know what I'm saying, of, of these songs and you put them together. And I wasn't really feeling it at first, but she put it in an order that made me like it. So mm-hmm. um, since she did that, I ended up switching like two or three songs out of her order. But because she did that, she got credits for being like an executive producer on the album because it's like I would have never landed the idea to drop a project if it wasn't for that, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, I don't really drop projects and shit like that. Just flooding niggas. You know what I'm saying? My intention was to flood niggas with eight different songs, but I was like, if I put eight different singles on one project and then we brand all the singles and then they not elsewhere, people going to always come back to listen to this song on this project. So they're going to find a way to listen to the project. You know what I'm saying? So Mm -hmm. if you came for one song, shit, cause you can't get in, you know how it'd be single versions and shit. Like, yeah, yeah. Nigga, you gotta go to the project to listen to it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Only two songs I released earlier as singles, like "Scare Love." Yeah, I remember that. And, yeah. You uh-huh. released "Roses." I mean, that wasn't off the project, yeah, but you yeah, released yeah. Uh, "Roses" too. I think that was 2020. Uh, "Roses" probably 2019. 2019. Yeah, it was Damn, like right the, before the pandemic. Look, we gonna skip the pandemic, okay? Yeah, because <laughs> that shit always feels like <laughs> just one year. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. The whole time. To- and, and speaking of the pandemic and shit, how was like last year for you? Like how how did being in like That's us being, being in this damn crisis and shit, how did that uh I guess like help mold you to Man. like did your songwriting change like the way that you was re- like recording and shit because we we all stuck in the crib mm-hmm. like it's, it's like it's just hella a long time so how did that change you as an artist and, and so, did it affect the way you release your music it affect the way I released I'm gonna answer you first and then to him because. This is how it's going to trickle. Okay. So I was supposed to release an album in 2020. It was recorded already. I felt like because of the pandemic, I put too much into the album to be able to just release it during the time people can't pay attention. So during the time, based on what the album was about, I didn't feel I didn't feel connected to the messaging because I emotionally wasn't there. Not that I couldn't go back, but basically it was just like the shit that you go through when you're trying to a- achieve a dream and you're pursuing something that you want. You know what I'm saying? It's called moments and desire, you know? So it's just like, you know, that feeling, like a Kanye graduation type feel. Like, you know, you're trying to have this moment. But at the same time, you're trying to have this moment, I'm dealing with these emotions of being in a pandemic. So, yes, my songwriting changed because I started writing shit that felt like the shit that I was feeling in my mind. Mm-hmm. 
Then I'm getting on Twitter and Instagram every day. You just tapping through stories. Niggas not even seeing shit. Just putting black screens up, seeing how they feel. And I'm like, I feel like this too. Like, why not just make music based on how I feel? Yeah. And everybody else feel like this shit too. I know yeah. it's going to resonate. You know what I'm saying? So that's pretty much why I was at with it as far as like, you know, my songwriting process. The album is still coming out, but Alone in Blah was kind of like my gap to be Ooh. like, yo, like, this is coming out, but like, so next spring my album will be out. The Illinois app is available now on Apple and Google Play Store. Download the app, get the latest news, stream our podcasts, watch interviews, and listen to Illinois Radio Live. Download the app right now. Tune in to Illinois Radio, Chicago's most valuable radio show. I'm your boy Biko alongside my special co host uh, known as DJ First Class. Yes, we still got the homie Cassius Tay in the building. Still in here live in full effect. You know what I'm saying? Now I gotta jump into this modeling, bro. Cause yeah. uh, we touched bases on it a little bit, but when did you find yourself becoming a model? Uh, I feel like definitely in college. I would say um, college is where I got like the most experience and most exposure. It was kind of like, like I said, when like um. Josie, the lady that would that would shoot me, when she would, um, cause she was she went to my college as well. When she would bring the pictures she took back took of me back to class, it would be other students in the class like, damn, like who who is this subject? You know what I'm saying? So I just started getting people to just take pictures of me. You know what I'm saying? Around wow. campus, you know. So it's like okay, cool. So as I'm posting shit from me rapping, you know what I'm saying, and then people coming to my page and seeing me with modeling pictures, kind of the same when I had did the Illinois freestyle and they see my pictures and then they did not get booked for something. It's kind of like, oh, like um, I, I really like this. Can you do this as well? You know what I'm saying? I have this, you know, I have this brand. Can you model my clothes or you know things like that? And then it went so far where uh, I ended up modeling Foot Locker. And that shit was kind of crazy. Yep. Jordan, yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, yeah, yeah. Jordan, Jordan had a um had a thing that they that they did with Foot Locker, and I had a model for that. And I was like, man, that's super dope. But I think as fun and great as that experience was, I really do enjoy like modeling for um Chicago brands that I really like, like and respect. And you did uh, uh 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 wait, don't say it, Juggernaut. I did. So I did Trap House. Trap House. Did, My bad. Yeah, yeah I did. I did partnership. Trap House and uh, the Leaders Collab. The shirt we shop go, got him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah Those yeah. joints cold. Yeah. Boy. Exactly. Yeah. Bill Dars. Yeah. Bill Dars. Yeah. Yep, there we yep. go. So I, I had did that joint. Um, that's crazy. I'm drawing blanks. I had a model for like a lot of different like Chicago now, brands, but I don't know if you know this, but matter of fact, you finna know it now. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but when I saw the picture of you in the collaboration co- collaboration with us, uh, the drink, y'all. <laughs> 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 the collaboration. Hey, hold on, bro. we cannot skate past that shit. Hold on. <laughs> hey, you got the blue cup to him, bro. Oh, <laughs> Just when I say collaboration, yeah, collaboration. Like, like hey, this, bro. look. Anyway, it's a new that, word. What? Yeah. It's a new word. Yeah. The, no, I'm scared to say it. But when, when they did their partnership, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, they did their partnership. And they had you model for it. Yeah. I saw the shirts, the build arts. You had the hoodie on. I yeah, yeah, I had the hoodie shirt. on too, yo. That's what led me to purchasing my two shirts and hoodie. Damn, mm-hmm. see, hey, this shit worked. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> hey, come fuck with your boy. You know what I'm saying? Me to model some shit, but look, I look because I love streetwear so much. I am very selective on what I do and don't model for. Because, you gotta be, yeah, because I gotta be. If it has to be some shit like if you didn't ask me, would I buy it? You know what I'm saying? Because I, I'm like really tapped into that culture. It's a lot of shit that I really do like. And it's not some shit I grew into. This is some shit since I was a kid. So it's like I would really appreciate, you know, you cared about your work before you asked me instead of just being like, oh, I, I know what it's going to do for me. You know what I'm saying? Right. And mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I get that sometimes too, even with like beard companies because like I, I would say I also started getting more yeah, opportunities saw that on your IG. yeah so the more opportunities I started getting different opportunities when my beard started getting fuller and shit like that and I was like uh seeing um you know a lot of companies that I would want to work with well first of all I started taking care of my beard differently because I felt like it was hard for me to find black owned representation or beers that was my size when you YouTube share and you look for advice, you know what I'm saying? But Evan Alexander, a brand that, that reached out to me, hey. You must know Evan. You must know hey, about hey, it. Hey, hey, look, 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 you know man, look, look. Bro, because cause I'm still shit. I'm trying to look, get all to all of us. y'all. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, hey, hey, Evan <laughs> Alexander, shout out to Evan Alexander. Thank you. Sure. Yeah, you know what I'm um, saying? Bro, 
speaking of the him, like I've been copping from bro for like the past like what like two years and shit, and just watching his videos and shit, and mm-hmm. just schooling on how to take care of it and shit, yep. on how to eat and how to you know like hey, shit to hey. do and shit to don't do, and it's specifically for black, black men. Where you finding that shit? And then it's like, you know what I'm saying? and it's like, a it's a niche for that because there's so many black men that got answers, and then specifically if your beard is a certain way, because a lot of times when you see. These beard things, like they always get the model with the biggest beard. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that's yeah. like, bro, I don't fucking look like that. Right. I probably look like right. that, nigga. Fuck, but my beard, it's nah, not so, that. But these motherfucking beards be, be down here, be so, full and thank shit. You. So like, when you watching on, him bro. apply certain things, and he's like, <laughs> like, I take this amount, <laughs> nigga. What? Like, like, <laughs> like, come on, bro. Like, come that on, don't bro. apply to me. You know what I'm hey, saying? I'm happy to be a part of the big game. Exactly. This recently happened. So exactly. You know, when when shit when shit recently happened, you'd be like, damn, like this is like a new life. And I would say. Uh, it definitely brought new opportunities for me in that space, and I could definitely say I got different, more gigs in in working with people because of that. Mm-hmm. Um, and I would say that the shit is definitely very important to me. So that's another thing too. Like when when people ask me to model for certain things, it has to like line up with things that I care about as well. And I feel like skincare is important because skincare is beard care. Because if you don't take care of your beard, that's like it's. The skin under the beard yep. is more, exactly. more important to take care of, and I feel like, um, yeah. So that's that's another thing too, as far as like modeling. So yeah. Now I got two things I want to say. Two things um, for those that's listening. My brother's definitely an influencer Thank because, you. like I said, you led me to purchase some gear. You know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. And I peeped the beard, uh, mm-hmm. grease the, the beard, uh, shampoo, and all mm-hmm. that that you was promoting. Yep, yep. Uh, and, and secondly. <clears throat> We're over here sipping, you know. Oh yeah, and you're drinking water. Water, you know. Another thing I'm super passionate you know, about. I wish I could have my own water brand, so, but yeah, keep going. You know, health is well. You damn, they can. Yeah, yeah, shit. I, I, yeah, that's fine. Put, put it out there. You know, yeah, you know, yeah, 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 you're right. You're right. Health is wealth, mm-hmm. and as my brother, my good brother Illinois Jones would say, mm-hmm. no Sandusky, mm-hmm. but y- your body's right, my thank brother. You, thank you so much, and, man. And you, like I said, I'm sipping this toxin, and you sipping water. Exactly. To be a model, you have to look. You know, you have to be. All you can be and just be healthy at the same time and look according. Yeah, I think um, I think recently, probably like six weeks ago now, like I started with a personal trainer because I haven't worked out in like two years, and I just started thinking about well, think about all the opportunities that you got and not working out. Thinking if you can work out, and I'm not trying to like get big as hell or nothing like that, but definitely just look more. I don't know. Look, just kind of like look how I look when I used to play sports. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I think that that I also like do a lot, um, but. You know, although like modeling, you know, with with your shirt off, it does bring opportunities. But I I do know like my preference is to model like clothes, just cause I like streetwear. Um, I want a clothing brand of my own. You know what I'm saying? I design a lot of my things. Although I didn't airbrush this, but I drew it, so I damn near might as well say oh, I did. So but, you yeah. did create that? Yeah, you know. So this is like my fourth piece of merch that I've done so far. So. All my merch that I've done have all been successful. People always hit me up like, damn, who did this? And I was like, man, like, me or I collaborated with somebody, you know what I'm saying? But I'm definitely very hands-on with, like, shit like that. Is the merch available? The merch is available. The whole time, this nigga right here damn near finna single-handedly bring back Oh yeah, the, the, the airbrush tees. You know, you know what, what I'm saying? saying? Like y'all know, y'all know how how motherfuckers was coming when mm-hmm. we were shorties yep. at, at the North Riverside Mall and shit. Oh, and yep, yep. All that the, the spray paint t-shirts. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yep. This is some yeah. dope shit right here. Thank that, you. And he did it himself. Fuck around and Again. bring that that whole way back because our whole time feel like, uh, and this is just like a circle of a life type shit because a lot of shit that. We used to wear is starting to slow come back. Mm-hmm. Come back now. Yep. Whole time, I feel like niggas finna start back rocking your bows and shit. Bro, I just seen a couple niggas outside with them. You Look, feel me? I'm gonna like, keep it a hundred thousand. I got a Jabo jean jacket. I ain't see. It's nice. I got some dickies and shit at the crib, nigga. I, I, I just bought I got a dickie a whole jacket. Dicky fit at the crib. <laughs> see, bro, spray lie. painted. Fuck you talking see, about? I I'll fuck around and bust it out for Halloween or something. I don't know. Well, you know what I'm saying? Hey, know, I ain't gonna lie. That, hey, everything you saying is facts. And I think the reason I wanted to do the uh, airbrush vibes is because, you know, like, with Alone in Blue Hour and me feeling like, damn, I'm alone, I'm by myself and all this shit, you know, like, you during this time, this would be the times you'd be trying to get on the phone with a girl. You yep. know what I'm saying? Yeah, when you yeah. them airbrush days. So I'm like, well, 
with me trying to like get rid of something and me feeling alone and want something else and wanted to have them like cuddly on the phone type vibes. Let me just throw the airbrush vibes. Not to say I'm gonna throw it in your face, is that? Yeah. But just to just give like purpose to why I chose to do that. You know what I'm saying? I mean, what? I don't know if you broke down the purpose of why you did that. So the reason why, so originally, well, look, because I'm selling it, I will not lie, airbrush is very fucking expensive. So like the pricing of shirts is high because you got to think like that the ink costs a lot, you know what I'm saying, to 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 put on the shirt. Hold on, I got a black one too. So the black one costs more than the white because they have to basically go over it so many times. So you're just basically paying for, like, the design over and over again. You know what I'm saying? Mm. On, oh, on wow. the shirt. You feel me? It pop more, too. It, it, it pop more. You gotta, you basically paying for the pop. And also, like, I designed this, and I had just basically, basically like, mm. pressed Damn, this bro. shit on the back. You, you know what I'm saying? And that design. shit, like, yeah. it's, <laughs> less is more. Less like, is that's more. Rule of thumb. You Less is is always more. You know what I'm saying? Like, I could have a bunch on the shit, back, right there. You like could've. that shit is. You don't need need to do too much to stand nah. out. Yep, you that's, know perfect. What I'm saying? Yeah. that's perfect. Yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's something where it's like, I really also wanted something where people could walk down the street and ask you, like, "Yo, what is that? Where'd you get that yep. from?" Now you got to tell the niggas a story. So, so where can they get it from? So bro? look, look, G. If you go on my Instagram page at Cassius Tay C A S S I U S T A E. And you click the link in my bio, then it'll say merch. It'll pop up right there. Or if you were just going to go straight to the source, you can go to CassiusTay.com. Or, you know what I'm saying, you could DM me. You see me in the street. I don't have them on me. But I will say this. Because they are airbrushed, shirts do take three to four weeks to make. Because, that out there. you know what I'm saying, I have to get the shirt. And then I have to press what I need to press. And then the guy, he has to, you know... Airbrush it he, He's just not airbrushing my shit And then you know We gotta you know Ship it out to you But yeah so That's that's the only thing You're not getting it tomorrow But you know yeah, You gotta put that out there Yeah and because. And I know this is like Good summer vibes But like I, I mean I got pictures of me With this shit in flannels It looks really good in flannels And I also designed it To where If you wear a jacket Or you wear a flannel No matter where you wear it, What you wear As long as it's open It's in the middle center On mm-hmm. purpose mm-hmm. So the shit will always show You know what I'm saying So Boy, you, who you got it down yes, yeah. He don't got a What you say You had a, a 4.1 Yeah 4.1 He ain't got a 4.1 GPA <laughs> for no Niggas don't, don't Don't hear that shit <laughs> Every bro. day a uh, uh, nigga like me had a motherfucking look, two nine. Look, nigga, you, know know you, you ready for this? Look, I had a point eight. Okay, look, it got look, quite bro, a deal in this. Bro, bro. Hey, I know bro. some niggas that have point eights that did good but, in life. But, so, but look, 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 I graduated with a two point seven. So hey, it took so you time. work you worked I, hard. I worked hard. I was hey, look, a I was, student. It's hard to bring it's easy to drop your GPA? Yes it is. That's it's shit, hard to, hard get to up. bring that so shit back. I got to a two point seven, almost a three point. You went up two, two points. points bro. You know what I'm saying? Who was happy with me? Hey, look. Shoot. So it's a smart brother right here. Thank Take you. notes. Thank now you. before we uh before before we get into some more music and end things off, you briefly spoke. During break that uh yeah you had a well let's talk empire yeah you know yeah, empire is yeah. a distribution um company for music mm-hmm. uh and, and you spoke on that you actually had some ties to to empire how, yeah. how did things go and, and and what happened so basically um empire this happened like 2018 and i had uh i had two records that i had uh one is called shot town love story the other is called flower child and um, I had put out this project called Moments in Time. So I was going to do like a three series to lead up into my um, my album, Moments in Desire. It would be Moments in Time, Moments in Doubt, and then Moments in Desire. So Moments in Time is basically about uh, a time in life that I missed that I want to get back. So like Shot Town Love Story is like Juke Music and Flower Child is like, I don't know, like you meet the shorty and it's like now you're kicking it with her on the phone. And... Um, with that situation, I was I, I felt so deeply. I believed in the song so much. I felt like I just needed something more to push them forward. So I went ahead with Empire and how I linked with that was you know through Detroit. Um, was recording at a studio and um, uh, my homie Flaw, who who runs a company called The Code, they had uh, ties with Empire, and so because I was recording at their studio, I had released it through them. You know what I'm saying? And he basically, you know, set up the paperwork for me to be able to go ahead and do that. Uh, as of right now, Moments in Time, man, that little two-track EP, and I don't want to say little because that shit got like 300,000 streams. You that know what I'm saying? Little, my brother. So I, I appreciate everybody that's been streaming it, liking it. Uh, I definitely 
sonically I'm far removed from that. So if you hear that shit and you feel like this nigga was younger, like with me growing a beard and all the other shit, my voice did mature too. You know what I'm saying? The beard puts the bass in his voice. Right, right, right. And so I was, you know, that's when I was in my stages of becoming more of a man. That shit was 2018, we in 2021. This is probably the voice I'm gonna have for the rest of my life. So if you like the music you hear now, that shit, this, that's like, bro, you listen to a moment in time, that's like listening to comeback season Drake, basically. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Oh, that's so, a good way to, a good analogy. Exactly. Like so I'm kind of like in like the take care, I guess, vocal phase or some shit like that. I don't know. But, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. But I mean, let the people know where they can get in tune with you. Uh, again, you gotta let people know where they can get alone in the blue hour. Yeah, and uh, of course, if you're looking, if people looking to book you, features, whatever, Look, let people know how to get in tune with you. You know what I'm saying? My name is Cassius Tay. Uh, alone in Blue Hour is out right now. You can find me anywhere that you like to. You know, be on the internet. I don't be on Snapchat though. I don't be on Facebook either because that's like a family site and I don't have a family. Well, I have a family, but I'm not creating one. But I will say I am on Instagram and Twitter. I used to tweet a lot, but I watch more. But you can follow me on Instagram at Cassius Tay, C-A-S-S-I-U-S-T-A-E. And, man, I don't know. I'd be cool. So you could talk to me. You see me outside. I'd be like, what up? You know what I'm saying? Shit like that. And... I don't know. You can say something in the comments or something. I'd be paying attention to shit. But look, if you DM me and you don't follow me, though, I am bad with checking that. Uh, what's that third box? Oh, yeah. That's the, horrible. They the bogus for request? that. Yeah. That's the request. So, that's yeah, yeah. Boy, that, Seven boy, to ten business days, you will. Dangerous. You know, I will that respond. That shit can get dangerous. Yes. Yeah, yeah, but so yeah, man, I I didn't bro. shit. I didn't have opportunities. Like, damn, can I still do this shit? It's just like, so if you really want my attention and you hit me up in there, follow me. And then I'll see it. As far as features and shit like that go, man, if I fuck with you, your music, I would definitely do that because I like to rap all day. Um, you know, but I just hope this, the song just has to be, you know, something I feel connected to. But yeah, not even saying good, just something I'm connected to. to. Yeah. I hear that. Hit my brother up, man. Uh, definitely get in yeah. tune with him. Uh, we got an ill style coming from bro too, so y'all definitely want to subscribe to the YouTube channel. Just search right Illinois. now, right Illinois now, Illinois Radio. Subscribe. You know we got some dope heat coming your way.